big science breakthrough that Sagar and I are both, I think, a little Very bit nerding out yeah. on and excited about. There has been long, decades-long efforts to try to generate fusion energy, which right now we have nuclear fission, which is you break things apart. Fusion would be you bring atoms together that is sufficient enough to cause a net energy gain. Decades long efforts to achieve this, and I'll tell you why it matters a lot in a moment. Let's go ahead and put this Financial Times, they broke the news. Major breakthrough by US scientists boost clean power hopes. Um, let me go ahead and read you the beginning of this. U.S. government scientists have made a breakthrough in the pursuit of limitless zero carbon power by achieving a net energy gain in a fusion reaction for the first time, according to three people with knowledge of preliminary results. Physicists have since the 50s sought to harness the fusion reaction that powers the sun and other stars, of course, as well. But no group had been able to produce more energy from the reaction than it consumes. That's the milestone that's known as net energy gain or target gain, which would help prove the process could provide a reliable, abundant alternative to fossil fuels and conventional nuclear energy. Again, to reiterate, there are private companies um, and a lot of actually investor money that has gone to trying to achieve this end. They have not accomplished this first. U.S. taxpayer dollars funded public research that led to this massive technological breakthrough that could, could in the future lead to a clean source of limitless energy, I mean, which would be an entire, entire revolution. Just a couple more things here. Fusion reactions emit no carbon. They produce no long-lived radioactive waste, which, of course, the problem with uh, nuclear energy, and a small cup of the hydrogen fuel could theoretically power a house for hundreds of years. One of the stats that I saw was that a cup of seawater could provide the same amount of energy as an entire barrel of mm -hmm. oil. So that is what we're talking about here. Ultimately, it's described as the holy grail of clean energy. And if they can make this commercially viable, which we continue to be a long way from, this could be a whole energy revolution on the scale of like the industrial revolution. Yeah, I mean, look, I hope so. I, this is one of those where I also just wanna put in a thread here for public research because yes. this was something built called the National Ignition Facility and it was designed actually to test nuclear weapons by simulating right. explosions to advance fusion energy research, or sorry, to, for advancing nuclear testing, but then was repurposed for the three and a half billion dollar facility for fusion energy research where they're able to build, I think it's the world's largest laser, which is kind of cool, yes. which they use to bombard the plasma. I don't understand the science as much. I've been looking much more on the business end and we should be careful, right? Which is, look, even the initial data, it's relatively unclear. Yes, they did get that net energy gain, but it's gonna be very close. It does, unfortunately, take a hell of a lot of power to power the world's par most powerful laser. <laughs> that said, uh, as you said, look, are we you know, a decade away from this? Probably not. But are we $100 billion away from getting the first facility off the ground with some real testing? Yeah, I think we are. I think we are at that point. And that's a very hopeful story. I mean, if you consider the Pentagon budget is like $800 billion. So this thing only costs three and a half billion to build this facility. Let's say we go throw 100 billion at this or something with new federal research, we could be living in a whole new world. Uh, maybe what, 40, 50 years from now, economies of scale take a long time to develop. But initial government research, and I uh, I hope what we can see is I don't want this thing to get culture ward the way that nuclear war, uh, nuclear uh, energy was, yeah. even though I still believe, you know, cost effective wise and all that. It's oh, still where we are today, very, we have to continue to lean we, into nuclear. Right. Yeah. So like w nuclear in the interim fusion in the future. That'd be uh, I like that slogan future, <laughs> uh, that we could go for. The things that we should watch out and look for are we have got to encourage more public research dollars towards this because yes. it is still at, you know, it, the breakthrough is there in terms of the experiment, but now we have to replicate the experiment multiple times, possibly in different facilities, build even more, throw possibly like contests and things at this to get different physics, to physics departments and all of that involved. So that's the frontier I think that we're moving into right now. Yeah, I, um, you know, my dad uh, is a physicist, uh, long retired, mm -hmm. but long uh, physicist nonetheless. I was talking to him about this last night. He was super excited. And let me try to explain the science as best as my feeble brain possibly can. So as I said before, the reaction that they're trying to achieve here and that they did achieve here 
is what ultimately powers the sun and other stars. Um, and the reason they are able to pull it off and we have not been able to up to this point is because they have the benefit of having a large amount of mass. And it's that pressure that basically creates the heat that makes it possible for this reaction to form this plasma and right. have this net energy gain that just sort of continues. So. There's two methods that scientists have been using to try to achieve this net energy gain. One of them is, like Sagar said, using giant lasers <laughs> to basically, like, you know, superheat things up, which means move the particles faster. That's the one that's been um, successful here. The other method that's being tried in other places is basically using super powerful electromagnets. Right. That's the other method um, to try to achieve this gain. And so that's really the, the central challenge that they've been trying to figure you're out. Now, the hopeful indication here is that they're actually still crunching the data. There is going to be an announcement from the government of the Department of Energy, led by Jennifer Granholm, sometime today. So we'll see the specifics of what they said. But they said, actually, one of the challenges with getting the measurements is that the net energy gain was more than they expected and actually broke some of the instruments. So that yeah. seems like a hopeful indication that they even went above and beyond. It appears there may have been a second experiment that also was able to replicate this net energy gain. However, put this next piece up on the screen. Um, this is from Power Mag. They see U.S. officials set to announce this fusion energy breakthrough. As I mentioned, Jennifer Graham Holm, who is energy secretary, is, uh, is has said she's going to make an announcement of a major scientific breakthrough, and all expectations are this is going to be it. But they go on to talk about the challenge of commercializing fusion. They said it includes developing, developing machinery that could affordably turn the fusion reaction into power that could be deployed to the grid. Scientists have said that building equipment large enough to create fusion power at scale requires materials that are difficult to produce. In addition, the fusion reaction creates neutrons that significantly stress equipment and could potentially destroy that equipment. Um, so there are a lot of challenges still ahead. One scientist I saw quoted said, listen, is this going to be a significant part of climate crisis abatement in the next 20 to 30 years? No, it is not. So keep in mind, this is more of a long-term hope for the future, clean energy, trans completely transformational, hopefully in our lifetimes, and this is a major step forward. There was one other piece that I just wanted to bring you on the front of clean energy, which is, you know, we've talked here before about how the U.S. has really gotten majorly behind the game in terms of securing the mineral elements needed for um, EVs and electric vehicle batteries in particular. China has been very aggressive in securing these yep. mining rights. The Obama administration dropped the ball. The Trump administration dropped the ball. It looks like the Biden administration is trying to do a little bit of a better job. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. This is from Axios. They say that uh, this, the headline here is exclusive behind Biden's overseas mining funding. Um, they are trying to fund roughly a dozen different mineral projects overseas in a bid for more resources used in lower carbon technologies. Um, supporting more mining overseas could ease a raw material squeeze, hurting electric vehicles in particular. They, they also talk about the politics could have a side effect, giving Biden's foes fodder against him for rejecting mines at home. That, to me, is kind of the, a sideshow from the main key piece here, which is they're at least making some moves to secure the type of minerals that we would need to have a larger scale up of electric vehicle technology. I don't know if this is sufficient. I sort of doubt that it is. But you can see the, you know, again, they like dabble in some good things, dabble in a little bit of industrial policy that we just haven't had in this country in a very long time. Yeah, mineral rights are very important. And electric batteries and all that, lithium ion deposits across South America, Mexico, there's some major titanic battles happening in Chile with respect to mining rights yeah, and government right. and all that. So there's some interesting stuff that's uh, down the table. If that treaty does end up passing, which we'll, maybe we'll do a little bit of a segment on it, uh, if it comes to uh, news, if it becomes more newsworthy. But there's a lot of really interesting things that are happening at the governmental level to try and secure the ground through which companies can then begin establishing a domestic or more of a less China-reliant electric battery supply chain. Because right now, at least for the next decade, we are locked in almost 100% with China, which is not a good place to be. Not if ideal. If you want to bet the future on electric vehicles. Great planning from our political yes. leaders. Way to go, guys. So. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And 
and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.